We're reading Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone by J.K. Rowling. This version is illustrated by Jim Kay. We are on chapter 12, The Mirror of Aristet, and we will finish this today. There's only two pages left, so if that takes me 10 minutes to read, we got other issues. Here we go. Remember, if you want to, you can pause on the picture so that you can view them for a little bit longer, and then we, and then push play when you're ready to go. Okay, here we go. Remember, he found the mirror and has been seeing his family in it, and he doesn't have any family left on earth except for his um, aunt and uncle and Dudley so he really loves seeing his family um, and here we go we'll start this one with a picture that third night he found his way more quickly than before he was walking so fast he knew he was making more noise than was wise but he didn't meet anyone and there were his mother and father smiling at him again, and one of his grandfathers nodding happily. Harry sank down for Harry sank down to sit on the floor in front of the mirror. There was nothing to stop him staying here all night with his family. Nothing at all. Except So back again, Harry. Harry felt as though his insides had turned to ice. He looked around him. Sitting on one of the desks by the wall was none other than Albus Dumbledore. Harry must have walked straight past him so desperate to get to the mirror he didn't he hadn't noticed him. I, I, I didn't see you, sir. Strange how short sighted being invisible can make you, said Dumbledore, and Harry was relieved to see that he was smiling. So said Dumbledore, slipping off the desk to sit on the floor with Harry. You, you, like the hundreds before you, have discovered the delights of the Mirror of Aristide. I didn't know it was called that, sir, but I expect you've realized by now what it does. It, well, it shows me my family, and it showed your friend Ron himself as head boy. How did you know? I don't need a cloak to become invisible, said Dumbledore gently. Now, can you think of what the mirror of Erised shows us all? Harry shook his head. Let me explain. The happiest man on earth would be able to use the mirror of Erised like a normal mirror. That is, he would look into it and see himself exactly as he is. Does that help? Harry thought. Then he said slowly, it shows us what we want, whatever we want. Yes and no, said Dumbledore quietly. It shows us nothing more or less than the deepest, most desperate desire of our hearts. You, who have never known your family, see them standing around you. Ronald Weasley, who has always been overshadowed by his brothers, sees himself standing alone the best of all of them. However, this mirror will give us neither knowledge or truth. Men have wasted away before it, entranced by what they have seen, or been driven mad, not knowing if what it shows is real or even possible. The mirror will be moved to a new home tomorrow, Harry, and I ask you not to go looking for it again. If you ever do run across it, you will now be prepared. It does not do to dwell on dreams and forget to live. Remember that. Now, why don't you put that admirable cloak back on and get off to bed? Harry stood up. Sir, Professor Dumbledore, can I ask you something? Obviously, you've just done so, Dumbledore smiled. You may ask one more thing, however. What do you see when you look in the mirror? I, I see myself holding a pair of thick woolen socks. Harry stared. One can never have enough socks, said Dumbledore. Another Christmas has come and gone, and I didn't get a single pair. People will insist on giving me books. 
It was only when he was back in bed that it struck Harry that Dumbledore might not have been quite truthful. But then, he thought, as he shoved Scabbers off his pillow, it had been quite a personal question.